this is neo and neo is not your typical model where it can help you with security or hacking tasks to a limit it actually and unfortunately or maybe fortunately does it all for you and to shout out to you really quickly we have these predefined tasks that are created in prompts that i'm going to just run in right here and launch it and it can just ask it to maybe do something like hacker one and allow it to uh, find all the different domains and tools like that and it's just going to do it all for us in the background but that's not all i want to show in this video it's actually a little bit mind-blowing because it was able to hack into a wordpress website for me in under one hour and this is not your typical hack when it's a ctf and you just point it to a website and it finds vulnerabilities i actually had to feed it a vulnerable plugins source code have it compared to the last version identify the vulnerability create a working proof of concept and then help me exploit it all within that one hour so this is just next level stuff because as a security researcher i'm excited because i could just give it a source code of a company or a tool that i'm you know, auditing and have it give me leads but as a bug bounty hunter it is kind of scary because if it can just identify a vulnerability like that that easy what else can it do so for this video we're going to do three different things one is we're going to just test out the three con capabilities then i'm going to give it a ctf to see if it can just do the whole thing on its own and then lastly we're going to have it look into that wordpress website and see if it can just hack the entire thing honestly i've done all these already i pre-recorded it because it sometimes takes a really long time to debug these and work with them so everything that you see has already been done but you're going to see the entire chat log of me going through it with neo and seeing what it finds so let's start with our recon task first so the recon one is going to take a while and i'm going to quickly just show you what the process looks like you saw me earlier in the video that i asked it to run this and you can see that it is just going through it performing supplement enumeration discovering live host port scanning enumerating apis looking at the javascript catalog performing passive endpoint discovering using pdcp it's going to do some map ports to host names and it's just going to put everything in a folder and zip them up for me and if you want to look at the logs of it, actually, you can see everything and every command that it has run so far. So if I go up to the top right here, we can see that it has launched Subfinder, for example. And uh, this is the command that it ran. You can see that it's doing Nabu. It's done some stuff with HTTPX. And it's just not going to let us go through it all, unfortunately, because it's actively doing some stuff. But if you eventually finish this task, you will see that all the results, all the commands, you know, you can do the Katana output right here. You can see that it's doing Nabu right there. HTTPX and you can see at the top right there what the command was with the dash L status code titles and then so on and just going through it and listing them for us and just giving us a great output so I don't have to run these commands on my own machine and worry about getting results and it is good for, especially for someone who doesn't want to deal with recon and things like that for lead generation or even looking at your organization's assets and posture really really good start and I love that it can do all this stuff but that's really basic I think we can just create some models of our own that can do things like this not saying it's not good enough but i'm just saying that is something that should be expected out of it and not something super fascinating but the next one that i want to show you that kind of got me a little interested was this one and this is from my video from last week when i showed how max for stopping was hacked through fia by nagley and zlz and ian but all i did was give it this url and say hey go to the ctf that i've created escalate your access on this website and become an admin i did stop it there for a second because it was going down the rabbit hole of jwts i knew I eventually would go look at the javascript file and figure it out but i wanted to give it like a little bit of a push or a head start so i said hey don't worry about jwt testing here can you sign up and focus on mass assignments and tell me what your thought process is can it do that i honestly didn't have faith because i've done these with chat gpt and cloud so much and i get mixed results that i just want to do, do a light test right here and if you look right here you can see an entire thought process of it doing everything that it has done and eventually getting admin it says excellent now let me do a report for you and i said hey show me your admin credentials and it's given us the entire uh how to guide pretty much it's just giving us a blog post and a write-up for it so it looks like it is signing up with a regular admin or regular user out there not an admin then it did a little bit of enumeration and found app.js with the user slash user id endpoint where you can actually just uh, see there's a role object in the responses then it used api staff to enumerate those existing roles so you can see there's an admin with a description admin role staff staff role so it went back to the user user id endpoint and it was able to do mass assignment and give us or give itself the admin role and then the response came back successful and it was able to log into the 
admin panel and it got the flag and now it says the new tabs are applications and payments and it did it all and if you ever want to look at the files that come with us all you have to do is go to your files and it will have all the different things that i've run right here you can see uh but you can see right here i'm going to take a look at the privileges question walkthrough and it should have a screenshot right here that it was fully able to become an admin and the flag was right there so it does everything through the browser it exports it takes screenshots and sends it to us really really cool stuff this is what i was just like can we take this to a whole nother level and do something very very cool with it to make this last bit more entertaining and challenging i wanted to find one of the latest cves in wordpress it doesn't have to be WordPress core. It could be a plugin. It could be a theme. So I leverage WordFence, and you can see right here that looking at WordFence, which by the way, if you haven't done it already, they will pay you to find vulnerabilities in WordPress plugins as a part of the bug bounty program. But what it does is it lists all of the different uh, CVs that came out. And you can see today, November 25th, as I'm recording this, Ryan Kozak has found a unauthenticated arbitrary file upload which has been assigned this cve number and when i did a quick search on google there were no pocs for this there were no templates there were no nothing really uh, that i've seen so far for this specific cve i don't think this one has a cve maybe it does i didn't see anything for it so i wanted to be able to create it and see where we can go with it so what you do here is you can go to this write-up and it will tell you if it's a critical, it's a 9.8. It will you know, link you to the author's website, uh, all the details of this vulnerability. But I don't see a proof of concept still. But what we can do here, thanks to Neo, is I can go into wordpress.org, look at this entire plugin, and I can download it. But the cool thing here is that we want to download the previous version. And you can see this was updated 12 hours ago. So there has been a new update at 10.8, 1.10.8 is the version that we want. And luckily these are all uh, numbered like this. So I can make this an eight, download it. You can see I've already downloaded this one and I can do the download with a nine. And then we can go back to Neo and feed it and ask it to look for this vulnerability. And that's exactly what I did. I told it I'm providing you two zip files from a WordPress plugin. There is an unauthenticated arbitrary file upload in the eight version. Compare the code changes from eight to nine identify the vulnerability and then provide me a working proof of concept which it did almost instantly was able to identify it and you can see the entire thought process but the most interesting part of this was when it was doing a diff of all the php files that existed it noticed a specific file was deleted and let me just go through the analysis right here there we go it said that this file was completely removed and if you look at it there is a security flaw in there right here and that flow is the attacker can create a malicious github repository with a php web shell send a get request to this endpoint and just have the plugin extract the files to this folder and then the attacker can access the web shell and fully compromise the web server and it gives you the everything that you need there's a readme summary vulnerability analysis deliverables and so on and it tells you how to run the proof of concept and how to check for it and so on so at this point, I did run it. When I did run the exploit, it did come back and say, hey, it doesn't look like this is vulnerable, even though I had installed a vulnerable version. It did a quick analysis and realized that, hey, it is missing some parameters like token that needs to be there in order for it to validate as a vulnerable endpoint before we can exploit it. So it did do another analysis, told me how to create my GitHub repository, how to run it again, and then it gave us a bunch of files down here that were actually... Uh, the new one so you can see right here there's an exploit poc corrected pi there is an analysis deliverables how to test it and so on so all we have to do now is go into here run our exploit and tell it hey i want you to target this website of mine and tell me and check only actually if it's vulnerable which it came back and it said yep it is vulnerable so now i can do a setup help so let's do setup help and it comes back and says hey this is all you need to do for this to work all the different steps that you have to take first one your github repository get, then getting your GitHub uh, token, and then creating that you know, shell.php in there, and then running it like that, which if we do right here, you can see I'm doing GitHub token, which is my token. Don't worry, I'm gonna delete that after this video so you guys don't get access to my repositories. Then you give it your username, your WordPress repo where the PHP shell exists, and then you say verify shell, so it verifies that the exploit works. And we do have a shell, and it is looking at this endpoint. It says that endpoint exists and requires a token. So now I differentiate where it is there, it could be vulnerable, but it requires a token. Then it comes back and says, yep, the CV pending works. Do you want to override it? And if we push yes, it is going to push our file into the web server, upload it, and you can see that we have been able to get a shell from this 
immediately. Here's my thoughts on this whole AI thing. I know in one of the previous videos when I did Burp AI, I kind of said something along the lines of, I don't think AI is there to fully replace me just yet. With seeing this now though, I still don't think we're in a place where AI could replace us, but I do think that AI is going to probably get rid of a lot of the low hanging fruits and the easier bugs that a lot of people find, but it could also be used and leveraged in research, finding vulnerabilities, finding areas of interest, depending on your own methodology. So if you know what your style of hacking is, you know what you want to look for, you know where it interests you and your skills are, you can just take that and amplified by a lot and we have seen this by a lot of recent tweets online i've seen uh, hacktron is a good example of another company that's came up and doing research using their model and then this one specifically is just a cherry on top of seeing it do a lot of stuff and not just be able to run tasks and exploit vulnerabilities but also find vulnerabilities by looking at the source code of those zip files so with that said i know you're going to ask a couple of things if this is available for everybody how do you get access to it right now it is available to a lot of their customers and i know they're going to be opening this up for individuals in the upcoming weeks so do me a favor go to their website look at their blog post that will be where you can get the latest and greatest directly from project discovery with that said big shout out to the project discovery team for allowing me to get a beta test of this entire model giving it some tasks to do and allowing me to explore it and kind of just play around with it i do appreciate that so big shout out to them and thank you guys for watching this video all the way at the end and if you haven't already do me a favor hit that subscribe button hit that like button and becoming a homie we are almost at 200,000 subscribers let's get there by the end of the year all right that's it see you all in next week's video peace